This is just a sideline to my main video on Peltier, building a Peltier-based beer cooler. This is the power supply for the Peltier device. This was purchased as a constant current or constant voltage power supply module from eBay. However, it was found that it doesn't do that, it doesn't work. So in this, this video, I'm going to be reverse engineering it, looking over the schematic and all the different chips then we're going to try and figure out what's wrong with it, why it doesn't work, make some modifications, do some tests, hopefully get it to work. So I got this constant current, constant voltage power supply reversed out. Um, this thing was six, seven pounds on eBay. And in theory, these two little potentiometers on the top are supposed to set current and voltage. Uh, under low load it limits on constant voltage and then when you nudge over the current limit set by the uh, constant current potentiometer it starts supposed to start bringing the voltage down to uh, keep the current constant so when testing it I found it doesn't actually do that what it really does is provide constant voltage and then when you reach the current limit what it does is just turn off for about a quarter of a second and then turn back on again and try again. So that's not ideal. So I thought I would reverse out the schematic of the thing and figure out how it works. So um, here's a little bit of that process. This is the, the schematic I actually drew as I was tracing all the tracks out. Um, it's quite simple really. It looks, looks horrendous there because my drawing's not very neat but really the only things on here are um, a chip here on this heatsink which is um, uh, this chip so that is a buck converter really standard you've just got a V in you've got a, a MOSFET internally that switches this point here uh, with a, a clamping diode and feedback that brings the voltage back into here from the output um, so the feedback voltage is 1.25 volts and so what it does you arrange these resistors so that at your desired output voltage say 12 volts the divider ratio puts 1.25 volts here and so what that does is adjust the duty cycle of the switching here so that these the sort of LC filter formed here creates a nice DC output at your desired voltage from your input Pretty straightforward, quite a nice little chip, really simple, very few external components required. So what they've done here is they've got that chip mounted on this heatsink, and then on this side they've got another chip which is actually just a diode. In fact it's two diodes in one pack. So a more accurate representation of the circuit is this, where I've actually drawn the two diodes just in parallel. And that just increases the current capacity, they're actually rated 20 amps each. So plenty of plenty of current and they're shock keys as well so the voltage across them will be quite low. I, I expect when this thing's running that the majority of the heat will be on the switch road regulator side and there'll be almost no heat at all on the diode side. They probably could have got away with a surface mount diode on the other underside of the board for this design and saved themselves a heat sink. So what they're doing is they're bringing VCC in here and it goes straight to the the voltage regulator chip. So it actually, it's easier if we look at the schematic as well. So V V in goes straight into the switch chip, uh, and it feeds across in parallel to a 7805. That's a linear regulator, a five volt linear regulator, which is here, and that's the power supply for these op amps, which we'll come back to shortly. So it's a really simple circuit classic just as per the application note on the data sheet that kicks out uh, a fixed voltage which you can adjust using this potentiometer here. So if we ignore this diode and just pretend that's out of circuit for a moment that is just the circuit from the application note. It's just two resistors that set the feedback voltage into the feedback pin on the chip. Now their constant current element to this circuit is uh, is actually done here. They've got a 0.1 ohm resistor right here, pretty beefy one on the underside of the board. 
on the negative on the return. And what's going to happen as there's as current is drawn on the output, it will develop a voltage across this resistor, which is sensed by these two op amps, and they do different things. So this first op amp, all it's doing is driving a pair of LEDs. There's a tricolor LED on the top, just there between the. It's a bit hard to see with the lighting, but just nuzzled between those capacitors, you've got a little tricolor LED. And the way they've wired that. Um, it's a pretty bad drawing, I've got a better better drawing of the schematic here actually. Um, the way they wired that, they've got, one of them is wired straight across the... Okay, the camera died on me at five minutes, I'm not sure why, but it did. The We have we have a, a diode here, this is just draw, sinking current. Uh, so when this is low, this one will light. When this is high, that will activate the MOSFET, which will sink current into this one. So it's a very simple, just high, this one lights... Uh, wait, high, this one lights, low, this one lights, and that's red and green. So that's current limit versus no current limit is what's being sensed there. This circuit is what's, actually limit, is what's meant to actually limit the current. So what happens, you've got a voltage here, which is essentially, this is, this is open loop. There's a capacitor there, which limits the gain at high frequency, but for DC, this is open loop, uh, essentially forming a, a comparator rather than an op-amp. And so this is a Zeno diode. I haven't figured out what voltage it is yet, but that's going to create some voltage here, which is lower than 5 volts, which is then divided again by a 10K resistor. Hard to see why they bothered. This is stable. They could have just made this a larger resistor to get to a, a lower voltage value here, but that's the way they've chosen to do it. Um, I, would have, I would have saved two components there and the capacitor as well. Um, Anyway, you've got a voltage on the negative side, voltage on the positive, this forms a comparator. So if this voltage is too high, i.e. too much current, then this goes high. This goes high, this goes high, this diode becomes forward biased. We've got 5 volts here, we've got 1.25 volts here, so current flows this way. It, it can't flow into here because this is the input to an op-amp, so it must flow through these two resistors because this point here is higher, higher than 5 volts as well so this, there's going to be some current flowing this way and some current flowing this way. That's going to pull this voltage higher than 1.25 volts. This guy is going to sense that the feedback voltage is too high and turn the switcher off and, I, and then the voltage here is going to drop to nothing. The current's going to drop to nothing. This is going to go low. This is going to switch off and this is going to come back on again. Now what should happen in theory is we should reach an equilibrium point where the current through here is the right amount to create to mean that these two voltages are the same and that this stays as it sh as it should be. Now I think they've misfitted this capacitor because that capacitor slows down the response of that op-amp and I think that's why we're seeing extremes of fully off and fully on rather than finding a stable equilibrium. If you look at this, that capacitor is right there, it's that little ceramic capacitor and I think that should be a resistor. There's no silk screen, there's no um, indication of what it should be but just based on the circuit I would say this should have some gain. It should actually be closed loop, it shouldn't be open loop. We should see some analog value here that causes this to just conduct a little bit and find some sweet spot where this is regulating current rather than voltage. So what I'm going to try tomorrow, and I'll get some video if I can, is swapping that out for a resistor. I'll do it at work where I've got some better test equipment. And so what that should do is actually work this time. There's another detail as well. This These pads here are empty. There's another pin marked here, pin 4, which on according to the application note for the switcher, that is supposed to... Uh, provide capacity decoupling for an internal voltage regulator inside this chip which powers its internal PWM generator and they've omitted that that capacitor. They've got the, the pins for it but they haven't fitted it which means that the linear regulator inside here which is which has no capacitance on the output and linear regulators are famous for going into high frequency oscillations without sufficient capacitance on the output so I'm going to add that cap as well. Hopefully, with those two little mods, this thing should become a working constant current power supply, and then we can use it to power the Peltier. 
it would help if I finished explaining how the circuit works as well. So the last detail, um, I explained in quite a lot of detail how this part works as a comparator. This is actually wired as a comparator as well. You can see there's no feedback in this circuit, so the open loop gain of the op amp applies. So any difference in voltage here will be amplified essentially to the one supply rail or the other. So if the positive is higher than the negative, we'll see 5 volts. If the negative is higher than the positive, we'll see 0 volts. So that's going to light one LED or the other. 0 volts will light this one. 5 volts will light this one. The voltage that the so so the voltage on the positive is coming straight from the current sense resistor. So so that voltage is what's being compared and what it's being compared to is the threshold set by the constant current dial and that threshold is the same for both op amps. The idea is that you know, both op amps are essentially doing the same job. They're comparing the same voltages, but their outputs are being used for different things, which reinforces the fact that I think this should be analog, not digital. This one's digital. It's just zero or five volts. It's essentially TTL logic lighting LEDs. This one is being fed into an analog feedback pin on a buck converter. So the idea is that the LED gives feedback to the user at the exact same voltage threshold that this op amp goes and operates the buck converter. So that's that's the, the reason why these two circuits are actually connected together and how that's supposed to work. There's one more detail as well which uh, I forgot to mention. If you look at the capacitors on the input and the output, I've read these values off the caps themselves. They've put low voltage high capacity on the input and high voltage low capacity on the output. It's the wrong way around. Uh, this is a buck converter. It's always going to be stepping down. So this voltage is always going to be lower than this voltage, or the same. It can never be higher. So the fact that this is a lower value capacitor, lower voltage rating capacitor, is, is wrong. And also, uh, these two capacitors, well, these two capacitors, should I say, on the input side, all they're really doing is providing a local current reservoir for charging up this uh, inductor so they don't need to be huge actually the battery is is backing them up on this whereas these guys during the off cycle of the PWM on the buck converter are actually powering the entire load for those gaps and it's a 180 kilohertz switcher so you know half a say it's 50 percent duty cycle then it's uh, you know half a period or a quarter of a period of, of 180 kilohertz PWM cycle well, all the rest of that period of, the, of, of, of that cycle, these capacitors are the only thing powering the load, so they really need to be the big caps. So the other thing I'm going to do tomorrow is swap these around. I'm going to put the 1,000 microfarad 35 volts on the output, the pair of, and I'm going to put the pair of 470 50 volts on the input.